And uh, it was a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous service. Um, uh, a little controversy uh, came out of it um, uh, because we are church with a standard. I really think what happened was, uh, I think what happened was a plan of Satan was foiled. That's what I think happened. Um, uh, for those who don't know, and probably everybody does, if you're media savvy, you do. A, uh, 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 a group was, uh, uh, a young man was invited to do praise and worship here during the service. He was not invited by us. He was not invited by our church, nor anyone representing us. We didn't know the young man, uh, a brother from the national church who we was working with. We were facilitating the service. We didn't put the service on. We facilitated it. And uh, we've just come out of our mighty workers meeting. And we'd had a marvelous, marvelous move of God. Amen. So uh, knowing that it would be on the heels of the workers meeting, we still let them have the service. And uh, I thought coming off of the workers meeting, we'd, we had a good uh, turnout. Uh, because it takes a minute for people to regroup. Amen. And so, uh, but the young man, um, uh, when he uh, arrived, um, the young man uh, displayed, and no one would have known had he not got on social media and, and made an issue of it, you know. Uh, the young man uh, uh, act like a homosexual, sound like a homosexual, and talk like a homosexual. Now, homosexuals are welcome to come to our church. Homosexuals come to our church. Homosexuals, there's, there's some homosexuals here, probably, right now. And if you are, you are welcome. We've never said homosexuals aren't welcome. But our position is this. If you are homosexual, if you are even effeminate, and effeminate, according to the scripture, is a man who acts like a girl, a man with female characteristics. This is why uh, we do not uh, put before our children Madea, uh, Shanene, or any of these transsexual, transvestite, wicked characters. They're not funny. They're wicked. And if you find humor in them, you're wicked. And the Bible says, not only they that do the same, but they who have pleasure in them that do them. See, de depending upon what it is, I look at you funny if a certain thing can make you laugh. That's why I invited, we had a Christian comedian to come one time, John. I cut that out because I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's good for church to get people to come and make fun of how we do in church. So I cut that out. I cut that out. Amen. It's, it's not a ministry. We put, we put ministry behind everything to give it significance, but it's not a ministry. The Bible warns against a whole lot of jesting and joking. But the young man uh, said that because uh, my uh, um, minister of music, Elder Rayford, politely talked to the young man, not on the microphone, not on the microphone, not in public, but told him you cannot serve. Uh, the guy had earrings in his ears. The guy, the guy was clearly effeminate. And in his own post, he never said that he wasn't homosexual. Uh, uh, that would have been the first thing I would have mentioned. In, in, innocent people proclaim their innocence. Somebody said, but why did the president, why does he keep saying there was no collusion? I would have said it more than that. If I didn't do it, if I didn't do it, you're not going to get me to be neutral on something I didn't do. I'm going to shout to the mountaintops that I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Amen. And, and, and one of the problems is, to be honest, that, 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 that Elder Rayford has had to contend with, and, and we have to contend with this, the problem is that churches across this country have lowered their standards so. That's the problem. They've lowered their standards so that a guy, in times past, if a guy was questionable, 
If he was suspect, he couldn't lead praise and worship. And that's still the standard here. Now, I, I don't apologize for that. And then the young lady, uh, she had things to say, but uh, uh, from what I understand, I don't know, but uh, some said that she said that she is a lesbian or whatever the case may be. Well, now, if that's the case, people who are, are living that way are welcome to church. They're welcome to hear the word of the Lord. But the Bible says, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. A person like that, how you going to lead someone in praise and worship? How in the world? A guy, a guy could not lead me in praise and worship acting like a girl. Not Patrick Wooden. No, sir. Matter of fact, I, uh, uh, um, uh, I almost didn't get saved. Because where I met the Lord, there was one guy there like that, and I told the Lord, I said, no, nah, I can't, if that's what becoming a Christian means. And I, I was 16. I was 16, and I didn't know three scriptures. I knew somewhere in the Bible, over there somewhere, in the corner somewhere in the Bible, it said Jesus well. <laughs> now, I couldn't have found it to save my life. But I knew this, I knew, I, I knew intuitively that I wasn't supposed to be like that. And the Lord spoke to my mind and said, you don't have to be that way. And so I went on and, you know, made Jesus my choice. Say amen. Um, uh, we have allowed effeminacy and feminine men to become synonymous with black Christianity. It's a disgrace. It's a shame before God. It's a shame before God. And if you were here Thursday night, Thursday night's message was a harbinger. It was a warning. Good God, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, anointed appointed. And how you got to be anointed by God to stand on this stuff because it's all around you now. And if you, don't, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you're not good and saved, the devil will have you thinking there's something wrong with you. I just, I just preached it Thursday night. And how God will anoint us to uphold the standard. All right, so a test came the next night. Let's give uh, Ella Rayford a big hand. Amen. He was polite. It would have never seen the light of day had they not put it out there on social media. Now, let me say this also about this. Now, people now you try to use social media as tools to shame people. Let me, let, let me just say this to you. Oh, let's do that stuff. I don't care about your audience. I don't care about whatever you put out there and you're going to try to manipulate the church. Gonna manip manipulate by getting people to get on your side. Now, from what I understand, the, the, the social media beat him up. And, uh, but the reason why I believe that a plan was for you is because when the guy told about what happened between him and Brother Rayford in private, in the choir room, in private, the world would have never known had he not told it. He showed a clip of me preaching in St. Louis. Now, here's what I believe, and I admit that I'm speculating. They had that clip already ready and was going to show themselves singing right here and put up my, what I said in St. Louis and said, now, it looked like he preached one thing and he does another. And uh, Clarence kept it from happening, and I'm going to give you a big bonus after service. You got a whole lot of money coming. Already had the tape, had it cued, had it ready, and, we'll, and, and he would have got up and put on a sissy show. And, uh, and, and the thing backfired 
And really, what happened was, what, if he knew anything about this church, uh, uh, it would have never been public. And if he knew anything about this church, uh, Minister Ray, uh, Elder Rayford did him a, a favor because had he got up and would have been doing that, that one, El El Machuku, what he did would have done what he did the last time. Uh, somebody was up like that would have just called him off the stage. Come here, sit down. You can't, you can't perform like that. There has to be a standard. There has to be a standard. There has to be a, a standard. Our church is anointed. We had a singer to come here one time. And she was professional, she, she performed. And uh, I forget her name. <laughs> Jessica? Reedy. Fine young lady, I mean, I, and, but she performed and she bombed real bad and ended up arguing with the people. Because the, uh, she's, the people wouldn't get with her and she kept forgetting the lyrics of her, her songs and starting over, this is professional. And you know what we found out afterwards? Her problem was she was on a fast for Ramadan. She was fasting to a false god. I am so glad. I am so glad that at our church, you can't be fasting to a false god and make us shout. And run around. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I am so glad that even with the saints not knowing it, that's the Holy Ghost. Discernment said, we don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong. Now, in the average church, they would still be running because we have no discernment. And, in, and to a lot of preachers, things like this don't matter. They have no thoughts on it one way or the other. But here, it matters. This, let me tell you, this is where we come to worship. This is where we come to get healed, get delivered, get set free. This is where we come to be strengthened. This is where we bury our dead. This is where uh, we, uh, uh, we get married. This is where we worship. Praise the Lord. And, and in our house of worship that we paid for. That we paid for. Paid off. Our house of worship that we keep clean. We keep the yards clean. We keep the pews clean. We keep the floors clean. We keep it clean. This is why we worship. Well, we ain't going to do all of that and then let somebody who is uh, in perversion and in wickedness and we know it come and desecrate the house of God. That, would, that, would, that wouldn't make any sense. So I feel that they had a plan and the plan was foiled. And I believe whoever was in on inviting them was in on the plan too. Say amen. Amen. I talked with Bishop Hankins, and he thanked me for our support, and Bishop Hankins thanked me for our stand. He said, thank you, Bishop Wooden, and he thanked me because we saw to it that the event was a financial success, and they went over budget and put money in the bank. Amen. It succeeded in every way, and eight souls that night got saved Hallelujah. Seven souls got saved that night with 12 people being filled with the Holy Ghost. And on the Saturday service, eight more souls were saved. Any way you look at it. Now we need to put this report out on social media. Praise the Lord. It was a successful service, and we, but we defended the integrity of the house of God. Now, during the district meeting, I preached a message uh, entitled The Porters, The Gatekeepers. But I didn't preach it here. I preached it at uh, uh, Victoria's Praise. I'm going to see if I can't get my hands on it because uh, I want to make sure it's out there. We are porters. 
We are gatekeepers. The gatekeeper, Obed-Edom was a gatekeeper. That's why David left the Ark of the Covenant at his house. And that man got blessed. Oh, my God. God blessed him. God blessed his home. When you are a gatekeeper, you get blessed of God. It is our job to maintain the integrity of the house of God. And that is what we're going to do. So thank you. We can get someone to sing. And then we got great singers right here. And uh, it is apparent with some of the criticism, he couldn't have known who Clarence Page Rayford is. Elder Rayford is one of the greatest musicians in the world. He, he couldn't have known. He couldn't have known. And then lovely wife, stand up, Sister Rayford. Look at his wife. He couldn't have known. Y'all... Hey man, come on here so the camera get a shot at Rocket, stand with your wife. Yeah, yeah. Y'all come on up here. Y'all come on up here. Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. They ain't coming after my guy. Yeah, we're gonna put this on live. Wait, you ain't you ain't gonna attack my man for standing up there. See, because to me, what matters is what you say when it matters. And I want him to know I'm with you. Look at this, look at this man. There's his wife right there. Come here, baby. Look at his daughter. And, uh, and, and, and look at her. Got a beautiful family. And you got Trey. Trey, his son, is, a, is an awesome bassist, awesome musician. Say, hey, man, I'm going to move on. Say, so when are you going to move from it? When I move from it, I'm going to move on. And uh, how many children y'all got? Four children. Four children. Look at that. That shade of rock. It looks good on you. Amen. And that Jasmine, uh, 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 a very smart young lady. A brain. And doing a tremendous job. I'm proud of you all. Thank you for standing for God. God bless you. Thank you for standing for the Lord. Stand, 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 stand. See up room? Uh, when, any time things like that happen, you, the response can't be muted, nor can it be nuanced. Amen. People, have, people need to know where we stand. Well, I wonder what they, what, what they got to say about that. Well, now you know. Amen. Our position is um, the Bible is right. I want to thank uh, Brother Jermaine. Uh, he's a good man. He's an awesome musician. He stood up and others for Brother Rafe. He says, y'all get off of him. He's He's up holding the standard of his pastor. And that statement was true, but it's true in part. It's not my standard. It's God's standard. It's the biblical standard. And what has happened is churches have forsaken the biblical standard. Say amen. I'm going to stick with the Bible. 